Take a good look at the screen. You can see a particle moving up and down, executing simple harmonic motion in the y direction. The horizontal line is the x axis. I am now going to add one more particle located a distance delta x from this one which will also be oscillating but with a small phase difference of phi from this one. Let's add one particle. There you go. Now observe these two particles. They both move with the same amplitude, except the second particle reaches its maximum before the first one and then reaches its minimum before the first one. It leads in phase by phi. They both have the same frequency and the same amplitude. If I were to describe the first particle by A sine omega t, the second particle would be described by A sine omega t plus phi, where phi is a positive number. How do I know that it's a positive number? The first particle is described by A sine omega t. So it reaches a maximum when omega t is pi by 2. The second particle described by A sine omega t plus phi reaches omega t plus phi equal to pi by 2 at a smaller value of time. So that means it reaches a maximum earlier. So that is why we know that phi is a positive number. Let me now add a third particle, delta x to the right of the second particle, which has the same phase difference phi with the second particle that the second particle has with the first particle. In other words, I am going to successively add particles, each delta x away from the previous one and each differing in phase by phi from the previous one. See now we have a third particle which reaches its minimum before the second one, reaches its maximum before the second one and oscillates with the same frequency and the same amplitude as the other two. Let's add a fourth particle. Let's add a fifth, and sixth, and seventh. Now I'm adding particles, each located delta x to the right of the previous one, and each with a phase difference of the same value phi from the previous one, and each particle ahead of the previous one, leading the previous one by a phase difference of phi. Let's keep adding particles and see what happens. More particles, more particles, more particles. Pretty soon you start to see a pattern. Your eye is drawn to the shape. The overall shape is a peak which seems to be moving to the left. But concentrate on one of the particles. Perhaps the easiest one to concentrate is on the last one. That particular particle is simply moving up and down, executing simple harmonic motion. 
as is every particle look at the first particle again that just moves up and down up and down so each particle is simply moving up and down nothing is moving to the left or to the right but the overall pattern i'm adding more particles see what happens more particles more particles more eventually i have now added 49 particles making the total 50 particles and what do you see now you see a wave moving to the left you can see the crest moving to the left you can see the trough moving to the left the whole wave is moving to the left although if you were to concentrate on one particular particle it's very difficult to do that but if you could do that you will find that it's simply oscillating up and down let me now reduce the number of particles so you can get a feel for this again I'm reducing the number of particles and around this time you should be able to see that if you concentrate on one of the particles like the last one it just moves up and down pick a particle here it goes up and then comes down very difficult to concentrate on that because your eye is automatically drawn to the moving pattern which is a wave moving to the left so it is these little phase differences between the particles that produces a traveling wave i'm going to keep reducing it until we are down to again three particles take a look they are moving up and down except they are not in phase if they were in phase all three would reach their respective maxima at the same time and their respective minima at the same time and that is not happening so what is essential for a traveling wave is this phase difference what you see before you now is a single air layer oscillating back and forth performing simple harmonic motion but this time i am going to show you how to produce a longitudinal wave we start with a single air layer performing simple harmonic motion and now i am going to add one more air layer to the right of it a distance delta x to the right of it you will observe that they both oscillate with the same amplitude and the same frequency but they are not in phase if they were in phase they'd both be moving together keeping the same distance delta x between them and moving back and forth together but the layer on the right reaches its maximum before the layer on the left you have to be carefully observing this to see that i am now going to add a third layer to the right of the second layer the same distance delta x to the right of it oscillating with the same phase difference phi from the second one the same as the second one is maintaining with respect to the first one there's your third layer again they are all not in phase as you can see that I'm going to add a fourth layer to the right of the third one same distance away from it maintaining the same phase difference with it as the third layer is maintaining with the second as the second is maintaining with the first so between each successive pairs there is a phase difference of phi fourth layer fifth layer sixth you can see what's going on now I'm going to add a whole lot of layers there we go you can already see a certain pattern overall pattern each layer that i have added 
is only oscillating about its equilibrium position. Not a single layer is moving left or right except oscillating about its equilibrium position. But do you see something moving leftward? You can see compression, regions of compression moving to the left, followed by regions of rarefaction. Let's keep adding layers. This time, I'm going to add altogether 200 layers. Or rather, I'm going to add 199 layers to the first one so that I end up with a total of 200 layers. And what do you see? This is a sound wave. You can see regions of compression and regions of rarefaction. If you now carefully observe just the last layer, that is simply executing SHM. It's not moving to the left. What is moving to the left is the pattern of compression and a pattern of rarefaction. In the regions where it's compressed, the pressure is higher than atmospheric pressure. And between the re regions of compression, there's regions of rarefaction where the pressure is beneath the atmospheric pressure. Let's go back and reduce the number of layers back again all the way to two layers. And look, each layer is simply oscillating about its equilibrium position. The mathematics for this is exactly the same as the mathematics we had for the transverse wave. Here, the layers are moving in the same direction, in the x direction, positive and negative x directions, as the wave. See, the wave is moving in the negative x direction. So this is a longitudinal wave. Whereas, previously, when I increased the number of particles here, we had a transverse wave. Why is this a transverse wave? Because the particles are oscillating up and down in the y direction, whereas the crest and trough are moving in the negative x direction. So this is a transverse wave. Let's say the first particle is located at x equal to 0, and it was oscillating up and down with an amplitude a, so we describe it by y is equal to a sine omega t. The second particle is placed delta x away. So the position of the first particle, x coordinate of the first particle is 0. The second particle is delta x. The third particle is a 2 delta x and so forth. You can see that the n plus first particle is at n delta x. That is the x coordinate. The second particle, which is a delta x, is oscillating with the same amplitude and the same frequency, but it has an extra phase of phi. So if I call this the first particle, the second particle is described by a sine omega t plus phi. And the third particle, y3, is going to be a sine omega t plus 2 phi. Because that's phi ahead of the second one, which is phi ahead of the first one. And some so forth. So if I look at the phase differences, the first one, of course, with itself has a phase difference of 0. The second one has a phase difference of phi. The third one, 2 phi, and so forth. You can see that the n plus 1 th has a phase difference of n phi with the first particle. Now you can see that the phase differences are proportional to the distances. Clearly, there is a relationship between the phase difference and the position of the particle. To figure that out, we do the following. Let's look at the n plus first particle. It is described by y n plus 1 
is a sine omega t plus n phi. We'll write this as a sine omega t plus, I want to find the relationship between position x and the phase. So I'm going to multiply n by delta x and divide by delta x. So it remains the same times phi. But then n delta x is nothing but the x coordinate of the n plus first particle. So we can write this as a sine omega t plus what is n plus delta x is the x coordinate of the n plus first particle of this particle multiplied by this number phi divided by delta x which is a constant. Delta x is the distance between successive particles which is a constant and phi is the phase difference between successive particles which is also a constant. So if I call this ratio phi by delta x let's call this k. If I do that, the equation becomes the y-coordinate of the particle located at x is a sine omega t plus kx. In other words, we end up with a wave moving to the left just as we did before. This is the mathematical proof that if I keep adding particles and each one oscillating with the same frequency and same amplitude but with a constant phase difference with the previous one I end up with a wave moving to the left or to the right depending on the phase difference between the two particles. If each successive particles had been lagging in phase instead of leading in phase I would have ended up with a wave moving to the right. And one last thing, can we figure out what this k is? That's very easy. Let's ask if this particle is here and at what distance do I have? See, I'm going to draw the wave. At what distance do I have? At what distance do I have a particle which is in phase, oscillating in phase with this one? that particle is one wavelength away. If this particle is oscillating in phase, that means the phase difference n phi should be equal to 2 pi. So, that particle is described by n is equal to 2 pi by phi. This is the n plus first particle which corresponds to n is equal to 2 pi by phi and this particle is oscillating in phase with the first particle. Now what is the wavelength? The wavelength is n delta x because First, one, the second particle is delta x away, the third particle is 2 delta x away and this is the n plus first particle. What is its distance? Its distance is n delta x and that is my wavelength. So if I multiply this by delta x, I get 2 pi by phi times delta x is the wavelength. But lo and behold, what is phi by delta x? Phi by delta x is k. So I get the result lambda is equal to 2 pi by k. Or in other words k is 2 pi by lambda. All this we get from simply adding particles with a constant phase difference and letting them all perform simple harmonic motion and you end up with a moving wave moving to the left.